All right, everybody, we have the one top plugged in, set up, ready to go. Now we just got to get to the app, and I'm not showing my password. So we get to the app, click on the icon. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see one top in the middle. Click that, and we're going to do the salmon today. We're going to do it sous vide style. So we're going to hit that. It's going to give us a couple options, and it's going to play a little video clip. So we're doing sous vide, and there's the clip. Whoa. Okay, hold on. We're going to have to play that clip one more time, slow motion. Okay, guys. You see what I'm seeing here? Okay, let's take a look at it. Now, this is sous vide salmon, straight, right out once it's done cooking. And that's what it's going to look like. Now, for me, sous vide is great because it gives you the perfect internal temperature. But other than that, it's not giving you much. It's not going to give you, other than the seasonings you put in the bag, it's not giving you much after that. So, in my opinion, I don't really do the sous vide method because it does take a while, but it guarantees perfect cooking and you don't have to sit and watch it. So that's what's great about it. But as far as flavor... That's why I don't really use it. It doesn't give you a real depth of flavor. I like a nice sear, but it's hard to get that internal temperature seared. So what I'm thinking, let's do a double method. Let's sous vide it. And then once it's done, we don't want to cook it too well. And we don't want a really, really flaky fish because once it's done, we're going to take that out and we're going to get a really, I want to blacken it. So we're going to blacken this, which is like a really, really high heat sear on each side. And, um, to me, I think that's going to yield the best product. A perfectly cooked in internal temperature fish and a great flavor from the blackening and texture as well. So that's what we're going to do. And let's go ahead and play that video. All right, so resuming back to the app, you scroll through. It gives you all the instructions that you need, what you need to cook it with, the ingredients. So we're going to go to rare because again we're going to cook it a little under to what you know i really want it to and then we're going to sear it on high heat so it's going to cook a little more so we're going to hit that rare setting and now it's going to just going to tell us hey fill the pot with water plug in the thermometer and you're good to go so right there i hit the app and actually found it so now it's going to tell me, hey, we got to hit that little button. So there it is. Hit the little button to start the one top cooking. While you hit the button, I'm sorry, while the water is heating, it tells you to prep everything. So um, I didn't put the water in the pot yet. So we're going to go ahead and put the water in the pot. As you can see, it's already, the probe thermometer, it's already starting to heat up. So we'll get that water in there. And then again, it says to fill it about two thirds of the way up. And now we're going to do just a quick little prep work. We're going to cut these lemons. We're going to just lightly salt and pepper the fish. Now we're just going to lightly salt and pepper the fish because again, I want to blacken this and that's going to give you all the flavor you need. So we're going to get done with that. And what now? You put the lemons and everything in the bag. You don't want to do this too far in advance because the acid from the, leaven, the lemons will cook your fish. So, you know, we're just going to bag up the fish. I'm going to throw a lemon on each side. And um, I'm going to put some olive oil in one. And I'm going to do one without olive oil. I just want to see the difference, if any. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's really important to make sure that you get all the air out of this bag because you want it submerged in the water so where it doesn't float up. So we have everything bagged up, all the air is out of the bag. And now, you know, we're just waiting for it to get up to temp. I don't think you're supposed to put it in until it reaches temp. So right now it's really close and we're just gonna hit fast forward to where it does reach temperature. And now we're gonna Put the fish in the bag we're going to use little binder clips for the side and submerge it 
Now make sure, once again, just get all that air out of the bag and you shouldn't have a problem keeping it submerged underwater. You want all the fish submerged underwater. So I'm just gonna clip both of them in. And there you go, no problem. It took me, you know, a, you know, I think two tries on one of the bags to get all of the water out because it kept floating to the top. So that is a step that you definitely want to do. And now that's it. I mean, the, it's up to temperature and it's giving you a timer, 40 minutes. And after 40 minutes, it should be cooked perfectly. So just a little bit of patience. And um, let's hope that this sous vide method on the one top uh, does what they say they're going to do. Okay. Well, the timer went off, it's been 40 minutes, and let's take the fish out. Now, the binder clips, I flipped them down to hold the bag in, but now they're submerged in the water and you gotta get your fingers in there to get it out. So if you're doing a much higher temperature cook, um, I would just leave the top of the clips just sticking up. No need to really submerge those in the water. Um, so we're gonna take them out of the bag. Again, one has olive oil in it, one doesn't. It's not really gonna matter. I just wanted to see if it helps with maybe a little bit of a color on the fish, but it, it didn't really. But like I said earlier, it's not really gonna matter because we're gonna blacken this fish. All right, let's uh, get the fish out of the bags. Now, the temperature was set to 122, so I wanna see if the internal temperature actually hits 122 or if it's a little less. Um, again, we had it cooked to rare, so I'm just gonna get these out of the bag. Uh, now I'm hoping that it doesn't it's not too flaky to where it fall apart to where there's no way we can do this blackening but it seems it seems to be pretty good um, it seems to be holding together uh, and be firm enough so um, the first one didn't have any uh, olive oil the second one that's the the greenish hue to the bag that you see the olive oil now the white stuff I guess it's like foaming from maybe the lemon or maybe the lemon being on the fish and the fat coming up but uh, that's supposed to be there there's nothing wrong with that um, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna get a separate internal thermometer now and uh, let's check to see uh, what temperatures we have on the fish okay so this first piece um, it's a little thicker than the second piece but again it was at 122 and let's check this internal temperature and it looks like it's going to be right at 115 now the second one um, bad camera work by me and I didn't get it in but that one was right at about 117 so um, you know it's going to average out to about 116 um and that one was a little bit thicker so what which is fine because now it's going to give us a little more margin of error uh, for when we blacken this fish uh, it it can get up to about i want it to get up to about 125 you know 130 is fine okay so i have my cast iron and we're going to put some oil in it but stop um i used extra virgin olive oil and this is just a complete waste of money um this is all i had on hand but you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil to cook high temp with i mean it will it is a high temp a high smoke point cooking oil but it's just it's it's too expensive to use for cooking if that's all you have which is all i had on hand um, that's fine but go buy some canola oil it's got a high smoke point as well and uh it works pretty well with this um so don't use the extra virgin olive oil like i did um save the money use that for your salads and whatnot all right so we're just going to uh, line the pan with some hopefully you have canola oil and you're not wasting the olive oil on this but uh, that's what we're going to do we're just going to put the oil in the pan now we're going to set the surface temp on the uh, one top to uh, 300 i want it to get pretty hot because, uh, again, I just want to get a really fast sear on it, and I don't want the internal temperature to get too high. Uh, I just got some butter there to the side. But um, 
I add the butter towards like right before we're about to cook because it does have a very low smoke point, but the oil helps it hold on a little longer. So it gets gets hot pretty quick. It gets up to the desired temperature pretty quick. All right, so, you know, the temperature's, it's right up to close to where we want it. I'm just blackening the fish right now. And uh, I just throw a little pat of butter right towards the end. And because it does have a really high smoke temp, so you don't want to put it in too early. Um, so again, I use uh, Paul Prudhomme's, uh, the blackening. Uh, to me, it's the most flavorful. Um, so now it's starting to get a little, you see it's sizzling. So we're getting the good color on there. And you can see the difference. I mean, from that just pink look to what it looks like now, it just looks better. You know, it's, it's so much more flavorful. Um, so, and as you can see, the fish didn't fall apart. And 130 was like the target. 136, that's a smaller piece. So far to me, it looks like everything is perfect. Okay, so now it's out of the pan. And now you see how... This was the one that was actually 136. So uh, this was this to me. This is perfect. 136 is perfect. 130 is great. But look how flaky that is, and you can see how moist the fish is inside. Uh, still, um, it just flakes apart. You see those layers. That's what you want, folks. I gotta be honest with you. This mm, tastes perfect. If you have a limited space, say you have an efficiency or something like that that you live in and you like to cook, this one top, it's gonna be pretty versatile. I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. And uh, I'm gonna do some more recipes. I'll try out some more recipes. Um, so right now the sous vide, I like it. It came out perfect. If I would have set it to medium and you don't like the blackening, or you don't like the sear, I enjoy that. Uh, actually, I prefer doing that with a mahi, but uh, I just had salmon today. So, I mean, I think this is a great, great tool or appliance if you have a small space that you live in, small kitchen, and let's say you don't want to use so many pots and pans. Uh, I think this is great, because like I said, I use that cast iron enamel pot I sous vide in it, it came out to right, right at rare, and I like it right at 135, medium, medium rare, and uh, it came out perfect. Uh, I just, you could have sauteed it. You take the fish out of the pot, and empty the water out, dry it out, throw a little oil, a high smoke temp oil, get it really hot, throw a little bit of butter in there right towards the end, just so it can get some a little more flavor. Blacken your fish and just sear it on both sides. Maybe 30 seconds each side, maybe. Depending on how, how, how hot you get the pan, you're really not gonna need to sear it for long at all, because it's already cooked. You're just getting that nice crisp sear on the outside, get that blackening seasoning or whatever seasoning you want, get it nice to stick on it, and you got yourself a high-end restaurant quality cooked piece of fish very easily done and with a very large margin of error. It's it's gonna be hard to mess that up. I, I'd say the only way you can mess it up is if you sear it for too long. Uh, but like I said, 30 seconds each side, uh, let it release automatically, don't rip it off the pan. It should release once it gets hot enough and the pan's gonna be super hot. You want the pan to be super hot. Cast iron would be the best, so. Um, thanks guys, I hope uh, that you enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any anything you want me to try cook on this, if I can do it, I will. Just leave a comment below, like the video, and uh, so far so good with the one top tasty induction oven smart cooktop, and uh, the sous vide method seems to work good. I will try a steak with it as well, so stay tuned for that one. Thanks, guys.